Heather's is a musical that was based off the 1989 film of the same name. Um, <clears throat> now Heather's is it's it's a weird show. It's about it's about high school and being young and psychotic human individuals and it's a bit messed up um there it's it's the music itself is based around the 80s itself kind of when the when the movies is the movie and the show are set in the fall of 89 and um that's basically what what the show is is teenage life at this point for these kids and I want to kind of go through each song and pick at it a little bit you know I don't know um, so the first song of Heather's the musical is beautiful but I know I know life can be beautiful I pray I pray for a better way if we change back then, we could change again. We can be beautiful. Ow. Beautiful, as you just heard, was this... It, it, it's the perfect opener to a musical, and how every musical really should open up to some extent. You meet all the characters in it. You didn't hear all that in the clip, but, you know. You meet the characters, you find out the plot a bit more, it kind of kick, kick, <clears throat> it kickstarts the plot a bit more, and it works pretty well. I mean, it, it's a good song because first it's catchy, and second it does what a musical needs. It kickstarts the show in eight minutes or so, right? Yeah, just about. Uh, the next song is Candy Shop. This is when the dark humor of the show peaks in a bit. It some of it is more dirty, as you know. The title may kind of ensue, um, but it there's, the song itself is is more so this almost like a threat. You know, she's Heather is what's the, <laughs> Heather in a way is threatened by Veronica and doesn't want to lose this empire that she's kind of built in the school. So the next song is Fight For Me. Would I would fight for you If you would fight for me And Fight For Me is a lot like, uh, well, Veronica is basically talking to JD and she's realizing, hey, you, you're you cool, you can help me. And, because JD in the show is pretty much seen as Veronica's protector, which is fairly ironic if you really think about it. if you think about it later on in the show's sense. Um, I think personally it's kind of one of the weaker songs, but that's just me. I think the whole the whole album for the most part, the whole cast album, has this kind of rocky not rocky but rock kind of tone with eighties feel. And this one, it has that 80s feel, but not... It just kind of divulges from everything else. It, it's different than everything else in this in the show for the most part. So, you know, not my favorite, but it's okay. Uh, next up is Freeze Your Brain. <laughs> Freeze your brain Suck on that straw, get lost in the pain Happiness comes when everything numbs who needs cocaine? Freeze your brain. And this is one of the weirder songs because it, at a face level, it's it's JD coping with his mother's passing by food. Um, and not only his mother's passing, but feeling like an outcast because he mentions that in the first line of the song, he says uh, 10 schools so far or something like that. And 
so he he moves around a lot basically and it's explained in the song a bit more and he only feels comfort in 7-Eleven and he prays to slushies not literally of course but you know it's it's weird and funny and enjoyable and that's about it up next is Big Fun the are gone. it's time for Big Fun Big Fun we're up till dawn having some Big Fun now Big Fun it's a song about drinking and partying as a high schooler. God, I don't care, you know? I, that's my opinion, I don't care. But it's kind of, it's it's this fun little ba ba dum bum ba big fun, you know, whatever. But I don't care, you know? It's not my song. Hmm. Next up is Dead Girl Walking. Which is, oh my goodness, this is one of my favorites, um, just because of how it sounds. The subject matter is, you know, hmm, on an edge of, you know, the, it's the inappropriate side of the show. What are you gonna do? It's about sex, so that's, you know, that's the thing. Um, <laughs> um, it, it's interesting because it kind of pushes that stereotype of, like, men always being the sexual deviants, if you will, because it's Veronica pleading JD for sex, and so it's a bit of a different angle to the high school sex situation of the show. Up next is Me Inside of Me, right? Yes, perfect. All right, cool. No one sees Jesus, you're making me sound like air supply. Keep going. This has to be good enough to fool the cops. Um, <laughs> uh, me inside of me is basically, so, <clears throat> after Dead Girl Walking, there's this part where JD and Veronica are trying to prank one of the Heathers by giving her a hangover drink, basically. But JD puts, uh, like, uh, <laughs> like sink uh, cleaner in it or whatever something like that so they she gets killed by accident accident you know uh, um so one of the Heathers is dead and they forward a suicide note and um kind of like in the movie uh world's greatest dad and the kid who dies from a fake suicide note um it's like everyone's like, oh my goodness, this is so important. And like they see that Heather was the pain inside of her, sort of. It, it's it's like they, they see Heather as, as one of the Heathers anyway, they see her as this, this light, this beacon, if you will. And they see her with like... <laughs> They see her pain. She's the pain of the school, and it's kind of it's it's interesting. But I mean, another one of those misunderstanding kind of messes. <clears throat> so the next song is Blue. Now, <laughs> here is again where the song and the show gets to the dirty sex humor. This is all about blue balls. Um, and uh, uh, all right, um. It's, it's weird to go from a song about a dead girl inspiring people to blue balls, you know? It's, it's a weird, like... <laughs> it's funny. It's, it's a very interesting. Um, the language is a bit obscene, so be warned there, but it's the show, you know? You're gonna, you kind of know that already. Um, yeah, it's, it's, that's, what, that's all I can tell you. For your embrace, they're warm like mittens. They'll curl up on your face and purr like kittens. You make my balls so blue. Just look at them glow. They're begging you. Don't make my balls so blue. So the next song is "Our Love Is God," right? Yes, 
Okay. I worship you. I'd trade my life for yours. They all will disappear. We'll plant our garden here. Our love is God. And uh, basically, this is. It starts out as kind of this ballad of a song, and then turns into literal murder, um, which is you know fun, right? Um, basically, Veronica pranks the two jocks, Ram and the other one. I'm forgetting the name. I'm so good at this, right? And and uh, so they go to the cemetery, and then. JD kills them. Um, so that's, you know, fun, right? Murder. Right from the song about blue balls. It did, come on, what? It's weird to put that right in between the songs. That, what, I, I, sorry, I'm dumb. But, <laughs> oh, goodness. It's a battle of murder, basically. Um, yeah. The next song is, was it my? Yeah. It's my dead gay son. I love my dead gay son. Now I've been thinking, praying, reading some magazines, and it's time we opened our eyes. Well, the good Lord made the universe, the Lord created man, and I believe it's all a part of his gigantic plan. I know God has a reason for each mountain and each flower, and why he chose to let our boys get busy in the shower. Um... This is the the song because at Ash I want to say Ash it's not Ash uh, Ram and his fellow football jock buddy what is his name I need to figure this out his name is Kurt it's Kurt and Ram all right we're good all right we're good so Kurt and Ram uh, they get murdered in the cemetery and that's fun but. The song, My Dead Gay Son, is from the dad of Kurt and Ram. The dads, excuse me. The parents of Kurt and Ram. And they are singing at their funeral. And it, it's basically like... It, it, it's kind of like... He starts out and he's like... <clears throat> this, you know, I, I miss my dead gay son. I love my gay... He's, he's gay and that's fine. Because da, da, da. It's, it's the 80s, so... And, um... And so there's just this, this, I believe it's Ram's dad who is very like, no, this is wrong, this is wrong. And then by the end, they're making out. Um, so listen to it. And that's the song. I, uh, it, it's not that, it's good. It's a good song, but it's just a, there's a surprise in it, is what I'm gonna say. The next song is 17. Let's be normal, see bad movies, sneak a beer and watch TV. We'll bake brownies or go bowling. Don't you want a life with me? Can't we be 17? Now, 17 is kind of the theme, the thematic song of the show. It, it's, it's about staying young and being 17 and not wanting to be older but still thinking you're an adult kind of thing, you know? Kind of what every teenager would go through in general. It's that. Uh, it's, it's all about Veronica and she's just... She feels like she... Just she wants she wants to live a normal life as a seventeen year old and J D is kind of he's doing the opposite of that and he's giving her the opposite lifestyle that she wants and that's not good for anyone so you know seventeen up next is uh, sh shine some light not shed some light shine some light. Shine, shine, shine a light on your deepest fear. And um, 
Sean's Mind is basically all about giving up your secrets, kind of like getting getting the thing that is bothering you off your chest. That's kind of what happens in the song to some of the characters. Um, it, it's interesting because it's it's about showing your true self, really shining light on the things you hide inside. You know, so. It's good. It's it's poppy. It's almost like disco, which is interesting. I think it's sung by a teacher mostly, like of this of the school, so it makes sense that it would be in a bit of a decade before most of the movies music ten or the shows music tends to be, you know. So everything from the students is more eighties, and then the song from the teacher is seventies. It, it I don't know. I don't know if that's what they meant to do, but I like it. So. Up next is Lifeboat. I float in a boat in a raging black ocean, low in the water and nowhere to go. And Lifeboat, I don't care for it. It's a song, you know? Um, it's basically Victoria feeling responsible for everything. I think it's Victoria, anyway. Um, give me a minute. <laughs> it's Victoria, and she she feels like she is responsible for everything, and everyone has to be in her hands or her boat. If you really think about it, in that sense, eh, I don't know. Maybe I'll listen to it some more and like it more. But at the moment, mm. so after Lifeboat, there's a reprise of Shine Some Light. And I don't like the reprises too much. Um, I might go into the reprise for Dead Girl Walking, just because that's the only one I, I enjoy. But maybe I'm just being bad at this. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I don't know. Reprises aren't my favorite, so. <sighs> um, but after the reprise of Shine Light is Kindergarten Boyfriend. There was a boy I met in kindergarten. He was sweet. He said that I was smart. He was good at sports and people liked him. And at nap time once we shared a mat. I didn't sleep. I sat and watched him breathing. Watched him dream for nearly half an hour. Ooh. And it it's it's weird because it really does kind of capture that young kindergarten like love you know it it talks about it's like i i don't i don't know if it's victoria or heather one of the heathers i don't remember um i forget it doesn't really explain well in the music that i've been listening to but um it explains that uh it's like it's like this kindergarten boy who like there's a scab and like a locket it's kind of gross and it's like this kindergarten boy was perfect to me until we got to first grade so I got older and then it got worse and she kind of carries that over to her life now and it's like well it was started out great but then it got worse and worse and as we age we become different people and we become worse people in some extent and it's interesting to like look at it from this angle of being a child and how innocent that would be and how brutally honest that is. So looking at it from a different perspective like that, I liked it. The next song is Yo Girl. <laughs> wow. I sound very white. Um Yo girl, keep it together. I knew you would come far now you're truly a heather smell how gangsta you are and <laughs> and uh so yo girl is basically uh one of the heathers is talking about a girl who tried to kill herself by jumping off a bridge and failed and veronica feels bad and then like it's basically veronica's like warning song you know they're they're basically saying 
the, the, the there's a chorus, chorus quartet, you know, whatever it would be. There are singers, there there are characters that are singing, goodness, and they are singing about how Heather, not Heather, how Veronica is becoming a Heather and is becoming this vile character. This this there's a word that I'm not going to use, you know, witch. Mm. Um, <laughs> that kind of character where she's just being awful. And you see that Heather in the beginning of the song is very awful in what she says and how she says it. So you see that Veronica is becoming that. Up next is Meant to Be Yours. And so I built a bomb. Tonight our school is Vietnam. Let's guarantee they never see their sea. Oh, goodness. Oh, my gosh. So, Meant to Be Yours is JD singing to Veronica about how he is supposed to be hers. Almost in, like, a Bonnie and Clyde way. Like, basically, he's she's like, he's saying, you're supposed to be here with me laughing about murder. Um, that's, like, a line that I believe he says to some extent. And it's kind of messed up, you know? I mean, it's the show, so what are you going to expect? But it has this, like, feeling of... Like, the song sounds nice in the beginning, and then you realize what you're listening to. It's not that nice. So, meant to be yours. In between meant to be yours and this last song, I Am Damaged, there is a reprise of Dead Girl Walking. It's good. There you go. Uh, I Am Damaged is the next song here, and the last one I'm going to cover. I'll talk more about that afterwards. I am damaged. Far too damaged. But you're not beyond repair. Stick around here. Make things better. Cause you beat me fair and square. Please stand back now little further don't know what this thing will do I am damaged is basically JD's final effort he's talking about how he he's messed up everything in his life and he's gone and murdered people and it's it's because he he feels alone and Veronica sees that he, he talks about his mother and how she died and this, this awful situation that happened to him in his past has come back to haunt him in some ways. And it, it's, it's interesting to hear this, this individual singing about death and how it's hurt him and his life. The song After I Am Damaged is a reprise of Seventeen, which really sums up the whole show. So it's, you know, listen to it. I'm not putting it in here, but, you know. That is Heathers. Heathers the Musical, based on the 1989 movie of the same name with Renata Wider and Christian Slater. Is it better than the movie? Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the characters bring out more there's there's more of a theatrical performance from the characters than the movie, which is obvious. Um, and that shows the character development is more rich in some ways than others. And that's what's really important, is like the characters come out more in these movies. Or in the, in the song, it's not in the movie, excuse me. And I think it's wonderful. I think it's raunchy and dirty and funny and really messed up at times, but it's great. Listen to the rest of it. It's a good time. Mm -hmm. Alright. Catch you guys next time.